Hey everyone, so this video will be the first in a series I've created where I'll be showing you various mnemonics that I came across and how I annotated my first aid book. Um, before I get started, I'd like to introduce myself. I am a third year U.S. medical student who scored a 254 on her USMLE Step 1. Um, so this series will be showing you how I annotated my first aid book with various clarifications and various tidbits and mnemonics that helped me really grasp concepts throughout the textbook. I'll be starting off the series with the general principles and then I'll slowly move on through the more organ based systems. So we're going to start off with immunology and specifically the important cytokine section of immunology. This can be found on page 104 in the 2017 edition of First Aid. I encourage you to pause this video and grab your book so that you can write down any mnemonics that you find helpful. Now I find that mnemonics and illustrations are very helpful for subjects like immunology which are more memorization based. Um, so just follow along and if you find anything helpful, write it down. Um, the first ones that we'll be reviewing is interleukin-1 and tumor necrosis factor alpha and their association with cachexia. Now cachexia is the weight loss and muscle atrophy that you see in patients suffering from chronic illnesses and malignancies. Um, so you can remember it with the phrase cachexia. Yes, that's that. Your eyes are not deceiving you. That is a cock. That is a penis that you see in front of you. And it'll help you remember cachexia's association with IL-1 and TNF-alpha because often um, more vulgar images stay in your mind than like PG-13 images, if you, know, if you follow what I'm saying. So cachexia should help you remember interleukin-1 and TNF-alpha. And cachexia develops because interleukin-1 and TNF-alpha suppress the appetite and increase your basal metabolic rate. Now, there's also an association of IL-1 and TNF-alpha with fever development. And you can remember that with the phrase hot cock. Hot cock, cachexia, IL-1, TNF-alpha. Now, IL-1 and TNF-alpha cause fever by increasing the levels of cyclooxygenase enzymes that convert arachidonic acid, which is a derivative of membrane phospholipids, into prostaglandins, specifically prostaglandin E2, which stimulates neurotransmitter production in the hypothalamus. Neurotransmitters reset the temperature set point of the body to higher levels. Also, a good way to remember prostaglandin E2's function is there are two E's in fever, and there's two E's in prostaglandin E2, prostaglandin E2 and fever development. Now, there's an amazing pharmacology tie-in. NSAIDs like aspirin inhibit cyclooxygenase enzymes 1 and 2, and that leads to a decrease in prostaglandin synthesis, specifically what? Prostaglandin E2. So that leads to a decrease in the development of fever. So it's always nice to correlate pharmacology with pathology. Now moving on to interleukin-2 and its association with T-cell activation. Interleukin-2 is secreted by all T-cells and they stimulate the growth of helper, cytotoxic, and regulatory T-cells. IL-2 for T-cell or two-cell activation. Bone marrow stimulant is IL-3. Interleukin-3 causes the differentiation of bone marrow stem cells. So you can remember threesome if you want a bone, or three for heme atopoiesis. Okay, interleukin-4 is associated with the class switching of plasma cells from IgM to IgE. Now, if you orient your, hand, your left hand with your palm facing yourself and your ring and middle fingers together while the rest of your fingers are spread apart, you can see that it creates the letter M. So four fingers, interleukin-4, creating the letter M for IgM. And then if you turn your hand sideways, that creates the letter E if you use your imagination. So four fingers pointed downwards from IgM pointed sideways to IgE, class switching from IgM to IgE. Now, interleukin-5 is associated with eosinophilic activation and class switching to immunoglobulin A, IgA, 
if you've ever seen a histological image of an eosinophil, you see that it has a bilobe nucleus, as in this sketch that I drew below. And if you create your hands in this formation, as you can see, it also kind of looks like, if you use your imagination, it kind of looks like a bilobe nucleus of an eosinophil. So the bilobe nucleus looks like these hands, and a hand has five fingers, IL-5 eosinophil activation. Now, you can also see that this hand formation not only looks like a bilobe nucleus, it also looks like the letter A, right? So you can remember this hand formation consisting of five fingers on one hand with eosinophils and eosinophil activation, but also IL-5 and class switching to IgA. So look at the hand, put your hand like this in front of you right now, and tell me it doesn't look like a bilobe nucleus to help you remember eosinophil activation. Tell me it doesn't look like an A to help you remember IgA production. So that, I find it helpful. Maybe if you do it enough times, repetition will help you remember that. Now, interferon gamma is an easy one. Interferon gamma is associated with granuloma activation. Interferon gamma for granuloma activation. Gamma granuloma. So interferon gamma activates macrophages to form granulomas. Okay, so how have you been finding these mnemonics? I think they're very helpful. Now, interleukin-6 causes fever and it stimulates hepatic synthesis of acute phase reactants. Now, acute phase reactants are proteins that are present at elevated levels in the blood as a result of acute and chronic inflammation. So you can remember interleukin-6 for hepatic synthesis. Six, cis, hepatic synthesis. Interleukin for the hepatic synthesis of acute phase reactants. Now, interleukin-8 is associated with chemotaxis of neutrophils. It's a com major chemotactic factor for neutrophils. Interleukin-8 causes neutrophils to activate and migrate. So neutrophils activate and migrate to interleukin-8. I think that's one of like the easy ones to remember. All right, so that's all for this video. Let me know in the comments be below or simply like this video if you found any of the mnemonics helpful. I uh, plan on doing more videos in the future presenting to you my first aid annotations and mnemonics that I accumulated over the course of my second year and dedicated study period. Um, comment down below also any future video suggestions or things you'd like me to talk about regarding step studying or med school in general or just reviewing any kind of item. Um, like, comment, share, and subscribe for more, and I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good day. Bye.